was all the way on the side of my desk, which is not a good way of starting things. All right, we should be all good. Cool. Cool. Oh, I forgot. Mystic Veil turns off the audio if I click off the window. But that's fine. I'm not going to click off the window a huge amount anyway. Um, yeah. Welcome to another one of our weekly Nomad Games developer streams where every week we pick a different game. <laughs> Staring at myself again on OBS. I don't know why I keep doing this. Maybe I'm just so self-centered. I need to be able to see myself. All right, sorted. Yes, every week we play one of our games, digital board games. We haven't actually played any other digital board games yet. Um, we haven't actually tried streaming someone else's game, um, but we should do that at some point, because I know Wingspan have just put out a new expansion for, well, Wingspan, Monster Couch um, have just put out a new expansion for Wingspan, um, so it'd be quite cool to do that, just to play something a bit different, because um, I know there's quite a lot of interest in our Talisman streams, um, and all our streams in general, um, but it's nice to play something different, isn't it? Uh, TW3 Brick. Hi, from the UK. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Alright. Let's play some Mystic Veil. Uh, also, if anyone wants to play against me today, um, let me know in the comments, um, and I'll sure I'll, uh, I can take you on. Or I can try to, anyway. Um, yeah. So for anyone that's not played Mystic Veil, vale, uh, it is a card drafting slash crafting game. Uh, it's quite a cool mechanic. Um, I've not really seen it in anything else, so yeah, it's quite cool. It's easier to explain if I just start playing it. So I'm not going to play with all the... Ex I'm going to play with Veil vale Magic on, because... So one of the things with the expansions for Mystic Veil vale, is Veil of the Wild adds quite a lot of new mechanics, and so does Man of Storm. Veil vale of Magic doesn't really add that much, um, but what it mainly helps with is balancing the game. Um, so apparently it's a little bit not... There's a couple of unbalanced strategies uh, if you play with just the base game, whereas Veil vale of Magic sort of evens it all out. So let's do that. Let me just check something. Alright. We're all good. We're so good. Alright. Welcome to the very busy Mystic Veil main screen. So, for anyone that's not played Mystic Veil, uh, the way this works is you need to pick... You need to draft cards uh, that are advancements. So these cards are along here. Uh, and every turn you get to pick one, uh, or more if you've got the mana to do so. And the amount of mana that you get depends on the mana symbols on the cards that are on your field. So every turn you flip over cards until you get to the point where you've got three decay on the field. So as you can see, I've got one cursed land, two cursed land, and then on top I've got another cursed land. So all together, that's three decay icons. So I can't go beyond three. Uh, and because this cursed land's out and this cursed land's out, uh, these give me two mana each. That's a little blue icon. So, that's how you get resources. Now to actually spend them to get something. So, like I said, each, uh, each card costs a certain amount of mana, 
So you can see that in the top corner. Like Podlings cost two. Uh, there's some ones that are ridiculous, like this Entelder costs nine. Um, but I think I'm just gonna. Hmm. So I could get a Peacekeeper Druid. If you were to spoil, you may discard your on deck card instead. So it's kind of good because it means that. So basically, you can push to get more resources uh, at the risk of spoiling. So what spoiling means is you get more than three decay on the field at any one time. Uh, and so if you do that, your turn's just over. You don't get to do anything. So it adds a bit of risk to it. So at the moment, I could push and go up to three mana, but if it's a... If the top card's got a decay on it, then my turn's immediately over. So this is like the core of what makes Mystic Veil um, not a more interesting game, but it adds like an element of risk to it, if that makes sense. So I'm going to take that risk, because why not? And that's what happens. So the top card was a cursed land, which meant I spoiled. And that's the end of that. Sad. Right, I'll pause the audio for a second because uh, I'm getting better at doing everything I need to do before I start a stream. Uh, but the only thing that I've not done um, is say that we're doing Mystic Veil vale on the Nomad Discord, which you should join because it's very cool. All good. But yeah, I'll be giving away some Steam keys for Mystic Veil vale today. Uh, so if anyone would like to win some Steam keys, um, feel free to comment in the chat. Uh, and as the stream goes on, I'll keep a note of everyone who was cool enough to join the stream uh, and chat. And I'll be giving away some keys. So, yeah. So... Twee three brick, I'll put you down, because you are quite the cool guy. Hey Foxbird, I'm glad that it's perfectly timed. I was going to say, I feel like we see you uh, quite a few times in our streams now. Although I don't think, have you watched us play Mystic Veil vale before? Uh, Lynx, welcome to the stream, I'll put both of you down to uh, potentially win a steam key. I'll do a random dice roll thing um, at the end of the stream and then pick a lucky winner. All right, I'm going to... So Wood Sprite's quite a good get just because I get some extra mana in the early game. That's really what I want to be focusing on. Druid song's quite good as well. Uh, let's get... Oh, so I've got four mana. Should I really be using it the most effective way? Alright, let's get a Druid song. I want to make the most of my most mana. Uh, Mystic Veil looks interesting. Found out about you guys through Talisman. A lot of people find out about us through Talisman, that's for sure. <laughs> Talisman is by far our most popular game we've ever done. Um, which I think is a mixture of like being in the right place at the right time and also just 
the amount of nostalgia people have for Talisman. Um, like, it's been around for ages, and it's got a really nice community um, that's developed as well. So, yeah, a lot of people know us through Talisman. Uh, Johnny Sabu, hi. Welcome to the chill Nomad Games stream. All right. I need to decide what to do with my life. I've got four mana if I keep this. So I could push and potentially spoil. Love me some chill Nomad game stream. All our streams are chill Nomad game streams. That's the beauty of it. That's the absolute beauty. Blah, 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 blah. Absolute beauty of it. All right, I'm gonna put a life bringer seed on here because that cancels out the decay. And if there's less decay, I can flip more cards, um, which is always nice. Uh, let me just take a second to make sure I note down all the cool people that are in the stream. Because um, like I said, I'll be giving away some talent. Why are words failing me today? Um, I'll be giving away some Mystic Veil vale keys um, for the base game just to spread some of the joy. So, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Um, as you guys are the most dedicated ones, I'm more than happy to just throw some keys your way. Uh, links. Uh, and Johnny. Ah, uh, so I had a tea earlier, uh, as you can see, because it's it was on my desk. Uh, but I've not had one because today I'm mixing it up and having a cheeky little Dr Pepper. So we're going wild here on the chill town on the. Uh, la, 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 la. I keep calling it the Talisman stream. It's the Mystic Veil vale stream. Yeah, we're going wild. No tea. Only Dr. Pepper. Matthias, welcome to the chill uh, Mystic Veil vale stream. Mystic Veil, vale, not Talisman. Too used to calling it the Talisman stream. Yeah, I'd be interested because it sounds like we've got a mix of people who have played Mystic Veil vale and a mix, mix of people who haven't. Um, and I know that just based on the way that this screen looks, you're probably thinking this game looks absolutely mental. Uh, but it's actually quite simple once you get to grips with it. Uh, they don't sell Dr. Pepper in Australia. Or Austria. I can never remember which one Aus means. Alright, I've got three mana to spend. Oh yeah, Dr. Pepper's definitely ruining me. Uh, A-U-T is Austria. That makes sense. If you send me a key, I'll 1v1 you, bruh. Mate, I think you might already have a copy of Mystic Veil, vale, MVP Miller. Something tells me you might already have a copy. You actually don't have a copy of Mystic Veil. Vale. Disappointed. All right, I'm going to go for the Field of Flowers. Get that mana. Which I don't know if it's the best choice, but I don't care. <laughs> Mystic Veil vale player Miller. If only. If only. Alright, who haven't I got on my chased a little list? Alright, cool. Uh, Alright, I've got two mana, which is absolutely nothing. So I might as well push, because I don't, I don't care. I'm just, I'm going wild. Alright, now I have three mana, but that still doesn't really get me anything. So, screw it. Alright, four mana, that does get me something. Get Wayfinder. Live my best Wayfinder life. Cheeky little Dr. Pepper. Not sponsored. 
if only we were sponsored by Dr. Pepper. I've actually got a friend who, um, there's a Coke factory near Leeds in the UK, uh, and he works there as an engineer. Um, basically just make sure all the batches come out as they should. Uh, so anytime we're around and we get a Coke out or anything like that, he's always like, oh, let me check the uh, product label, see if it's one of mine, see if it's one I've done. I was like, you're such a twat. <laughs> all right. Uh, I always thought it was like a weird caramel flavor, but what do I know? All right, what do I want to do? Let's go to harvest phase. I'm not going to risk it this time. Let's get a wayfinding boy. Only I've had the cherry Dr. Pepper down here in South Africa. See, I quite like cherry Dr. Pepper. It's quite nice. Alright, got three mana. I could push. Yeah, go on then. Oh, spoil. That's just unfair. But that's a risky take. Reminds you of Raisin Strange. See, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, it is a slightly raisiny taste. Alright, if anyone's got any cool questions about Mystic Vale or what the hell I'm doing uh, in this game, please let me know uh, and I'll be very happy to answer. At the moment, uh, I'm just trying to get enough mana to buy some cool cards. Buy some cool cards, buy some advancements for my cards, um, and then go from there. That's my plan. What's my favourite animation? Uh, my favourite animation is probably the big um, mushroom guy, because he is horrific and he gives you nightmares forever. Uh, he won't be in this because he's an expansion card, I think? Um, but if he does come up, I'll point him out, because he's horrific and the stuff of nightmares, and I like that. Alright, I'm going to plant a seed on here, and then go to the next. Seven mana. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. This is the kind of fun we're after here on the Mystic Veil vale stream. Is he out yet? No. Yeah, when he comes out, I'll point him out because he's a horrific little beast. Uh, Grove Tender? I already have quite a lot of cancelling. Um, let's get the Water Weaver and then just shove a fertile soil on this because I don't give a crap I always forget, can you swear on Twitch? I'm assuming you can I'm very much assuming you can never actually checked I might have been breaking the rules this whole time alright, no creepy mushroom man but that's okay Got eight mana, which is plenty. Absolutely plenty. All right, what do I want? Hive swarm. Magic seed guy is chosen. Got eight mana. Get the Grove Tender. Grove Tender seems to be the coolest choice at this point. Uh, and then just get some boring fertile soil. Nice and boring. 
never seen the game before, but loving the card styles and animations. Yes, so our art team put a lot of effort into making the uh, animations look really cool. Like, there's a lot of really cool. Like, it's not, it's not super just like, oh my god, everything's animating all at once. Um, but the fact that they were able to take the original card art from um, the physical game um, and make it look as cool as they did, um, it's really a testament to our awesome art team. Like, Moonwolf, it's just dead cool. Uh, you don't understand what's going on, that's fair. <laughs> uh, so, Mystic Veil. Vale is all about crafting cards. So, you know, like a deck builder where you change your deck as you play. Um, but Mystic Veil is different in that you don't change the cards, you add to the cards, so you craft them. And the way that you do that is by purchasing these advancements, so these things that have all the cool artwork on them. So, each card has three slots on it. So you've got the top, the middle, and the bottom. Uh, and then each advancement goes on either the top, the middle, or the bottom. So like the Leyline Overflow, that goes on the top. Uh, Mindful Owl, this goes in the middle. Uh, and then this is a Mindful Owl that goes on the top. So as you play, you pick cards from here and then add them to the cards that you currently have out on your field. So you keep doing this um, and then you've got various different bonuses that you can get from different advancements. And as the game goes on, you don't, the size of your deck stays the same, but the cards that are in your deck basically get better and better. So it's all about going, okay, how do I set up these cards? How do I make these combos in such a way that I'll get as many victory points as possible? Does that make sense? I haven't gone into like a lot of the mechanics, uh, but that's basically the gist of what you've got to do. All right, I'm gonna push because I've only got two mana and that's not really enough to get me anything. Are there any restrictions apart from the already defined position of the advancement placement on your crafting card? Uh, no, you just need the mana to spend to buy it. Uh, you can combine, yeah, you can combine any cards. Um, so for example, this card currently doesn't have anything on it. Uh, I could put a Mindful Owl, and then another Mindful Owl, and something else on it. Um, so you can set them up however you like, um, which is quite cool, because then it means that you can say, all right, I have this card, for example, the Feral Chieftain, and every time I use him, uh, I gain a victory point for every helmet on this card. So I can pick him and then be like, okay, if I get him on this card, I can try and make sure the other two cards that are on it both have um, the helmet symbol on it. So it's all about picking the right cards. And obviously because it's a draft based game, um, everyone's picking cards from the same pool. So part of it is keeping an eye on what your opponent's doing and saying, okay, what kind of strategy are they going for? How can I make sure to take advantage of what strategy they're not going for um, and go from there. Yes, Synergy. It's a very, very, very synergistic based game. Um, I believe sometimes they're called like engine builders, um, but I don't know if you classify this fully as an engine builder. Um, but yeah, a lot of it is just making the right choices and building the perfect deck um, to get more points than your opponent. Scoring and winning um, so down here, where we've got the other players, um, you've got points. So the blue victory points are ones that you get during the game. 
So for example, Feral Chieftain, every time he comes out, I'd get a victory point for each helmet. Um, so you get those as the game goes on. Uh, the grey victory points are static. Um, so these are the benefits that you have from different cards and advancements that just give you a flat rate of victory points. So for example, uh, if I add the magic seed to my card, uh, at the end of the game it'll give me two points. Uh, if I add Hive Swarm to a card, it'll give me two points. Um, Moonwolf will give me a point. Um, so, yeah. At the end of the game, you add up how many of those temporary points and how many bonus points you've got, uh, and whoever's got the most is the winner. Uh, seems more like a deck upgrader than a deck builder. Yeah, I think that's probably a fair way of putting it. Um, it does include a tutorial. Um, got quite a nice little tutorial in there. All right, everyone get the game now. <laughs> if anyone's got any more questions, feel free to let me know. And I believe where I was up to was, yeah. So at the moment, I've only got two mana to spend, which doesn't really get me anything. Um, I can get I can get fertile soil, which adds a mana to a card. It's not that exciting. Um, whereas Moonwolf will add two mana to a card every time it gets flipped over, uh, and it'll give me a permanent victory point. So it's probably worth going for that. So this is where the risk reward part of the game comes in. So after you flipped um, enough cards to get three decay you have the option to push the top card. So only the cards that are in your field give you resources. So at the moment, this Cursed Land isn't giving me a mana, but if I push it onto the field, it will. The only issue there is if I go over three decay, my turn immediately ends. So if this top card gets flipped over and the card below it has a decay on it, then my turn's over, but I've got to risk it. Sometimes it's worth the risk, and sometimes it's not. But I'm gonna risk it because that was that's what makes it exciting. So let's do it. Cool. So I've got an advancement on here, uh, which cancels all the decay on this card. So if I didn't have that advancement on this card, I would have spoiled. Uh, I would have, my turn would have ended, but because I picked up that advancement like two turns ago, uh, I haven't spoiled. So I still only have three mana. I'm going to risk it again for that tasty biscuit. Well, that's what happens sometimes. So the top card was uh, an advancement with decay, which means I spoil. Sad sad but that's okay you live and learn i say you live and learn i don't think i learned anything from that all right so uh some more people have picked up advancements uh, and now there's some new ones to choose from so let's see what i can get There's the Chromatic Wyvern, so I've got seven to spend. Uh, I'm playing against three AI players at the moment. Um, yeah, the maximum you can have is three. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the Leyline Overflow, uh, which means that after I've worked out how much mana I have, uh, I double it. Yes, the wyvern is quite nice. It's also just a really cool looking card. Alright, give me that mana doubling. Alright, nine mana to spend. Nine entire mana. Yeah. 
is a nice looking card. A lot of the art looks just really nice in this game. Alright, what we got? What we got, friends? Start getting some uh, victory points. I'm lagging behind. I'm so lagging behind. Alright, so I could get the Water Weaver. Uh, no one ever. Did Nomad ever put out more expansions? Uh, no, we have not put out more expansions for Mystic Veil. Um, I don't know if we ever will, just because the expansions that we did out, did put out. Um, they didn't set the world on fire or anything, um, so it's a bit hard to justify making more because, like, they did okay, but it's hard to justify when they didn't really make that much money. Um, like the amount that it cost to develop them versus the amount that we got back, like, pretty much broke even, which is fine. Like, that's not the end of the world, but. Like, we still need to pay wages and put food on the tables and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, it's just a bit hard to justify. Uh, I'm going to get a water weaver. And then I've got enough left for a moon wolf. Who I'm going to put on here. And then that's it. Oh, oh my god. So, <laughs> you know how I got the uh, Ley Line Overflow, which doubles my mana? Uh, that's how I've managed to get an entire 24 mana, which is ridiculous. So I've gone from having 2 mana to spend to 24, which is quite a bit. Yeah. And also, because on this card, uh, it cancels out all the decay. Um, which means that I can feel free to put, because both of these add to my decay, but it cancels it out, so it's quite a nice little combo if you can pull it off. So, I've got 24 mana to spend. What do I do with that? So I could get Guy's Chosen. Could get Will the Wisp. Yeah, I'm gonna get. Hmm. I'm gonna get. Will the Wisp on here. Uh, I can't remember. Is there a limit on how many cards I can purchase in a turn? I can't remember. Don't know if that's a rule or not. I can't even remember. Yes, it's two. <laughs> you can get two things, I now remember. All right, six mana, not quite as exciting. I'm getting a uh... okay cool I get a ley line overflow on uh, this one uh, are the placements limited for example if an opponent picks up the wyvern do I get a chance to pick it up later or is it gone for good uh, so it'll be gone for good um, but I believe each card has three versions um, so at the top, the middle, and the bottom. Um, so you'll be able to get one, but it'll be in a different position than 
the one that you saw previously. Right, I now have 48 mana, which is quite a lot. So I'm going to get... Yeah, so like the wyverns come back, but I think the wyvern that was here previously, um, its location was on the top. Let's get a druid song. Ooh, yes. So, I haven't been able to uh, show you these yet, but these are <coughs> uh, Veil cards. Yeah, Veil cards. So, during the game, you can purchase Veil cards uh, from the top row. Uh, that all have various effects uh, and the way that you buy them is with these little symbols here um see so there's the three leaves there's the sun uh, there's the bear and i think there's another one um oh no it's the wild uh, it's the wild you can use for anything um these give you various effects and various bonuses um but you need to have those resources to be able to get them so it offers like another way of um, going for more points. Uh, hi, Geeky Chappy. Welcome to the stream. Uh, I'll put you down for potentially winning some Mystic Veil keys because, yeah, doing another cool little giveaway um, for anyone that's interested. All right, let's end the turn. <gasps> the final round. Uh, are all the cards in the shop every game or is there some randomness to it? Uh, there's some randomness to it, um, so they get dealt out randomly. Um, and then you're not necessarily gonna see all the cards in a game. second sad sad uh geeky has all the nomad keys at this point surely don't know do you geeky chappy uh if you do you can always give it to a friend make someone's birthday here's something i got for free uh morning freaky yes so for anyone that was asking we do have a tutorial in the game um, that walks you through everything you need to know uh, and also gives you some expansion tutorials uh, if you pick up the expansions. So let's have another game and see if I can beat the AI. One of these days you might learn how to pronounce my name. Today is still not this day. Is it Frysai? Fricky? Brucey? Fry Kai. I'm gonna go with Fry Kai. Free Chi. Free Chi. <gasps> okay, I can do Free Chi. I can't promise I'll remember it, but I'll try. Alright. Alex Shakiri? Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the chill Mystic Veil vale stream, in which I'm trying to beat the AI, uh, but I'm a bit rusty, which is my excuse for not being able to beat the AI. Alright, I've got two mana. No, four mana. So, let's see what I want to do. So I could put Arbor over sit. No, I can't. I've not got enough mana. Go for the Wellspring? Mm. It's a bit rough because it does give me these resources, 
but there's nothing that I really could spend it on. It's not really giving me any benefit. Uh, had a lot of fun with Fury of Dracula with friends. Good. That's what we like to hear. Glad you're enjoying it. Uh, I could just get a harvest toad in a fertile soil. It's not the most exciting, but who needs excitement when you've got toads? Yeah, I'll put you down for a uh, Mystic Veil Key sweepstakes, uh, Alex Shakirai. Alright, three mana. Alright, I'm gonna push. Risk it. Oh, my risk messed my face up. Sad. <sighs> it's the cat. Bucky, would you like to come up and say hello? You're just going to sit there. He's just going to sit there. Come on then. Come on. It's not asked. It's completely not asked. Your internet keeps dropping out. Sad. Alright, I've got three mana. Spoil again. Can I pick you up now? I went to pick him up and he ran out of the room. Not having it today. Not having it. Oh, I don't think he's camera shy. Something tells me he's not camera shy. Looks a bit like Ascension. I don't think I've actually played the digital version of Ascension. Um, and I've got it in my Steam library, but I need to actually get around to properly playing it. Oh, he's not camera shy. He's, uh, we've got a new hamster recently. So his new favorite hobby is to just sit and stare uh, at the place where he's seen her in the cage before. Uh, and he'll keep doing that until she comes out. And obviously she won't come out because there's a big bloody cat sitting there so it's a bit of a stalemate all right what do I want to get let's risk it all right risk has paid off oh you want to say hello now Here comes the cat. What are you doing? And he's now walking all over my desk. As you should. Avoiding the keyboard, very, very well trained. Can I help you? Is there anything particular I can help you with? Can hear the ASMR purring. Oh, he's a very big purrer. The moment you put your hand on him, he'll start purring. Oh, he's getting so heavy. Here you go. You happy? Not happy enough. Great. Love it. <laughs> Alright. 
let's make a Mystic Veil decision. Uh, mine too, he purrs even when he's butting his head on my leg. That's what he was literally doing. He didn't want to know me, and then as soon as I started playing again, he was all up on my leg, trying to be my best friend. Right, uh, I could get the Water Weaver. I do actually like the Water Weaver's animation. Um, just because it looks like they're DJing. It looks like getting the DJ on. Alright. What do I want to do here though? That's the question. I don't actually know. Don't actually know. Get the water weaver and just get some more mana. Get some points, get some mana. How bad could it be? Yeah, I've actually got uh, three cats total, um, but the other two are nowhere near as social, which is fine. Also, I've managed to flip all these cards and only get two mana. Sad. Sad. Right. We got four mana. It's a bit better. Still not the best, but it's also not the worst. So, oh, spoil, you son of a, son of a fool. I got six mana this turn, so that's not too bad. All right, let's get a... Uh, would healer? Yeah, all it does is add me. So I've talked about decay already um, and how that will end your turn. Uh, but you can cancel it out with growth. Uh, so the green icon that's here. All right, so what we got? See, I'm flipping so many cards, but... I'm not getting that much mana. Yeah, it is a good mechanic, because you've got to balance yourself between... Um, uh, taking enough risks, um, and also, like, you can go for minimising the risk, but you won't get as many points, and there's lots of different ways you can do it. Let's put a plow on here. Alright, what we got? Five mana. Yeah, just get a life, bring a seed. It's not the most exciting turn, but it means my future turns will be more exciting, hopefully. Wow. That's an unexciting turn. I might as well start pushing, because I'm not going to do anything with two mana. Alright, let's see what we can do here. Yeah, overall, like, I'd say Mystic Veil has some of the nicest, just like, pure mechanics in a game that we've done. Like, the amount of thought and depth in the game um, it's quite ridiculous. I'm only playing with one expansion on. There's two more that add even more cards and advancements um, and mechanics. And it's a game that you can just play over and over again. Highly easily. Oh, spoil you son of a... See, this is more like it. Ten mana to play with. I'm very cool with that. Now the question is, where do I want to use that mana? So 
And get some life bloom orchards. Orchards? Orchards. Orchids? Orchids. That's it. Orchids. So I could get two cheaper advancements or one big one. I feel like I'm going to go for the one big one. Let's see, what have you got that's given you so much? Oh, you've got loads of Veil cards that are giving you loads of points. Yeah, some of these are worth like six victory points. So if you can get hold of them, it's really worth doing so. Um, just get Aurora, because she's dead good. I feel like I'm getting up early enough that... Get Aurora. Let's get Aurora and be fine with it. Alright, what we got? Anything exciting? Everyone's taken all good cards. That's fine. That's so fine. Because I'm going to get a Wolfman. Hopefully, get some more mana from it. Alright. Another not that interesting turn. No, well, I suppose I could get a Heartwood Healer and just increase the uh, amount of growth in my deck. Play it safe. Play it nice, boring, and safe. Alright, see, so this is more like it. This is the kind of turn that I want. Oh, it's the Mushroom Man. So this is my favourite animation, just because he's really creepy. And he's not meant to be creepy, but I find him dead creepy. Uh, if anyone else finds him creepy, please let me know that I'm not alone in finding this disturbing man quite creepy. Alright, I've got ten mana. Adorably creepy. Yes, the mushroom guys in Dark Souls 1, I know exactly what you mean. Where you're wandering into that forest and they're just sort of like going about their day and you're just like, oh, I don't know if I should attack you or run away. <laughs> Alright, so I can get Bear Totem and something else. From Army of Mushrooms album, Army of Mushrooms album cover. I did not know this was a thing. Oh my god! Yep, that's a <laughs> little bit uh, more on the creepy side for that album cover, but I see what you're going for. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd. Uh, this guy's like the uh, more chill cousin. He's like you see, he's still part of the family, but he's not quite as intense as those guys. All right, I'm gonna get bear totem, and I'm gonna get some fertile soil because extra mana is always good. Yeah, do they attack you or do they wait until you attack them in Dark Souls 1? I can't remember. It's been ages since I played Dark Souls 1. Um, I need to go back and... Actually, I can go back and play the remaster at some point, because I've only ever played the original PC version with the 60 FPS patch. Um, I've not actually played the remastered one. Um, and I'm assuming that I should. Yes, they are very slow. I think I just avoided them um, when I first saw them. Because I was like, I'm not dealing with that nonsense. Alright, I've got five mana to spend. I can get a Hawk or a Water Weaver. I'll just get a Water Weaver. Yes, so this is a good example of how you need to be careful with where you're putting your advancements. Because 
the only place I could put the water weaver was on the top and I only had this one to choose from. Um, so if you don't balance out where your advancements are placed, sometimes you can end up in a position where you just don't have um, the means to the means to put an advancement that you actually want. So you need to do a bit of forward thinking, which obviously I'm very, very good at, obviously. Yeah, as you can see by my seven and nine points, very, very good. Hmm. Final turn complete, have I lost? Absolutely, or am I once again second? Third? I did worse? I went out of focus, I was that bad. All right, I'm gonna try again, and this time I'm gonna actually get some of the um, resources, um, not resources, the, I can never remember what to call them, the little symbols um, that you can use to buy veils, because I've been not paying any attention to them, and I think that's been what's, uh, ruining my day. So I'm gonna get a limb thresher. Spirit tokens. That's it. I couldn't remember. Spirit tokens. You should probably get Dark Souls 1 at some point to have it on PC. I only played it on Xbox way back when. I think you should. That's my official verdict as a human being who has played Dark Souls 1. Um, it's a very good game. Alright. Alberto Overseer, nice to see you on the stream. I'm doing good. Having a nice little chill Mystic Veil vale stream. Um, I said that like all of our streams aren't entirely chill. Um, but yeah, doing good. Hope you're doing well as well. Praise the fun, exactly. Praise that sun. Uh, Albeldo Overseer, I'll put you in for a chance to win the Mystic Veil vale keys that I'm going to be giving away, because, yeah, I'm going to be giving away some cool Mystic Veil vale keys. All right, three mana to spend. Hmm. Let's put the sentry down here. So he doesn't actually do anything, the sentry. Uh, he just has two helmets on him. Um, but it's... Um, it's handy because it's synergizes with a lot of other cards. Uh, when's the draw? Uh, I'll probably do it right about the end of the stream. Like half an hour or so. Get the chieftain on there. Oh yeah, if you get anyone that benefits from uh, having more points on there, it's gonna be a good time. All right, so I can get the bear totem. I can get the wolf. The bear totem's probably the best bet at the moment because not only does he give me a growth, he also gives me some bear claws. Uh, how do we enter giveaway keyword? Uh, all I'm doing is, as the stream goes on, I will make a note of everyone that's um, been hanging out in the chat and hanging out in the stream, um, and then I'll assign each name a number and then do a random roll, and then whoever's the lucky winner is the lucky winner. Um, I was going to say I need to put um, Albedo Overseer uh, yeah because previously I've tried to 
look into ways of automating um, giveaways and every time I've just gone like this looks too complicated compared to just writing things down on a piece of paper and then rolling a dice so I'm just going to do it that way I'm sure there is an easier way um, but it works and I'm not bothered uh, D Chids. see I've got um, Streamlabs set up um, but I've not actually poked around in it all that much uh, which is on me, I need to do some more poking speaking of poking um, I'm going to choose to take the bear because I think that's a good choice oh, yes I can buy a thing In case I have to buy this game to all my friends to play with. Uh, yes, you do have to buy this game. And for all of your friends, tell all your friends to buy it. Uh, tell your mum, tell your dog, tell your mailman. Um, get it all up there, because everyone should be playing Mystic Veil. Vale, because it's one of the games that we're really proud of. Um, and it is a really nice, chill game. Like... There's a lot of depth to it. Um, it has random queue or something? Oh yeah, you can play um, multiplayer online. Um, and I think it's got crossplay between the Switch, mobile, and Steam versions. Um, I don't think we have a huge number of players, um, just because it's been out for a while. Um, but if you go to our Discord, which is down that way uh, and also in our Twitch description uh, you can find a link to our Discord if you're not already on there um, there's a Mystic Veil channel uh, where people look for games um, so you'll probably be able to find someone to play with on there because our Discord's full of lovely people who love playing games with people Uh, I'll be watching more of this game to learn more about how games can turn out. Yes, so I'm interested to see now that I'm going more towards a spirit token um, build for my deck, uh, seeing if that works a little bit better. Because now I've got a veil that every single time uh, it's my turn, I'll get a pour. So that should, in theory, um, help me get some more resources to buy some of these things. Uh, yeah, I think one of the things with this game is um, there's quite a lot of snowballing that can happen if you build your deck right. Um, but because games don't last very long, um, that's never really a negative thing. Uh, my friends who play Talisman and other board games might like this, so I'll pass the word. Please do. Word of mouth. So, as someone that works in marketing, I know for a fact that word of mouth is stronger than anything that I can do. Um, which is, at the same time, cool, but also makes me go, oh, well, you telling your mate about it is better than anything I could ever do. Um... Which is fine. Like, I think it really. What are you doing? So the cat's trying to get in the office bin because he's an absolute nut job. Uh, we get together every week to play a game or two, always looking for new stuff. Yeah, the physical um, copy of Mystic Veil um, is very nice. We've got it in the office, um, and yeah, it's a really fun little game. What are you doing? Just pretending like he wasn't head first in the bin. Alright, seven mana to spend. What are we getting? Could get some calm weather. Everyone appreciates some calm weather. Let's do that. What are you trying to get? Let's 
excuse me, while I sort out my bloody cat. Oh, there's a piece of cardboard. There was this piece of cardboard, which apparently is the most fun thing ever. Alright, let's have a look. Back to Mystic Vale. Uh, I saw a Batman villain's version of Talisman at a bookshop in a mall last year. Man, I wanted to buy it, but my wallet didn't, unfortunately. I know that feeling. I know that feeling all too well. Uh, let's push. Spoil. Sad. Sad. Man, I wanted to buy it, my wallet didn't, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, we actually need to get, because there's Batman, Star Wars, and Kingdom Hearts, right? Like, those are the new versions of Talisman that are out. Um, we actually don't have those because... Oh, we have the Batman one, uh, and then the Star Wars and Kingdom Hearts ones came out after Covid? After we started working from home? Um, so, normally, we'd be like, oh yeah, let's get them for the office. Uh, but right now we only have, like, two, three people at most uh, in the Nomad office at any one time, which is fine. Um, but it means that there's not that much point in getting that many board games, because one person can't really play Talisman on their own. Kingdom Hearts and Batman came out at the same time. The office did a Kingdom Hearts copy before the world ended. I can't remember us having a Kingdom Hearts copy. Probably do. Um, but yeah, it just means we need to pick up the Star Wars one then. So, yeah. Uh, and I think we've got a copy of the second edition of Talisman in the office, I remember rightly. It's been like... over a year and a half since I've been in the Nomad office. So, it's a bit hard to remember. Uh, also, my memory's terrible. So that would factor into it as well. Uh, let's get a water weaver. And hello. Are you interested in saying hello again? I can't. Nope. Not interested. It's got things to see out the window, don't you know? It's got places to be. Just love staring at the window. How often do you get to play board version, if at all? Um, so we do have, um, well, when we were all in the office, uh, we had board game days um, where we'd all get together and play some different board games. Um, so that would happen I think, every six months or so. Um, but because we're all scattered all over the place, uh, we haven't played a physical copy of Talisman for quite a while, sadly. Um, but I'm sure there'll come a time when we're all sat in the office again uh, and we can play some Talisman, and that'll be quite nice. All right, what have I got going on? Four mana. Push. Five mana. Push. Six mana. <gasps> yes. So this is the kind of synergy that I'm looking for. So he gets one growth for every helmet on this card, and this guy adds two. So that's two entire growth. I always keep forgetting to buy the uh, extra cards. Let's buy the Aether Tree, because that'll stop me spoiling once. 
I don't want to discard that. <sighs> See, this is what I'm talking about. This is the kind of tasty mana that I'm looking for. Alright. I've got nine mana. So I could get the stag, as he is quite the cool card. Magic Seed gives me a lot of mana, but don't really need that much mana. The Overgrowth gives me five victory points. It's tough choices. Tough, tough choices. Let's get the stag. I'm going to be bold. Uh, once per turn, choose a card in your field on deck. That card gains one helmet until end of turn. That seems quite good. Yeah, because if I've got cards that synergize and get bonuses for having helmets, uh, that'll be quite handy. So, yes, I can do that on my uh, Grove Tender. So what I'm going to do is activate this, modify this card, so now instead of just giving me two growth, it gives me three, which means I can push even more. So seven mana. I think seven mana is enough. Don't need to risk it too much. Uh, so let's get the, oh, I could get a life bring a seed. <gasps> or I could put a Feral Chieftain on my... Yes, I'm going to do that. Add enough biscuit. I have had enough biscuit. There's enough. There's been enough risk involved there uh, that I am all good. There's only so many biscuits a man can have. Only so many biscuits. Alright. Ooh, this is cool. So... Uh, certain cards not only give you resources, but have different abilities. Uh, so Calm Weather adds to the card and says, whenever I play it, uh, I can look at the next card uh, and I can get rid of it. So if you don't want um, specific cards, like a Cursed Land, it's just going to mean that I get more Decay and I can't really get as many cards as I want out on the field. Uh, I can discard it, which is what I'm going to do. So, bye bye card. Uh, Silver Griffin asks, are you going to be coming out with new expansions for Mr. Vale? I already got in the game and all the expansions you have so far. Uh, so, this is a bit of sad news, uh, but I'd rather be honest with everyone that asks us questions. Uh, probably not, just because we put out a couple of expansions for Mr. Vale and they did okay, like, they basically eventually broke even after a while, um, as in the amount that it cost to develop them. Uh, eventually we got that money back. Um, and as we're such a small studio uh, and we want to make sure we're not just going from game to game um, or we don't end up in a position where our funds start running out um, to like, pay our employees and all that sort of stuff. Um, basically it wasn't really financially viable for us to make more expansions. Uh, we'd really like to, um, and we'd still be open to it, um, but yeah, basically that's the truth. Um, we would if we could, um, but if we made more expansions, like we're not sure how many we'd be able to make before it got to the position where we had to make some tough choices. So. We'd rather focus on new stuff that we think is going to be more successful, basically. 
um, such as Catan, which we're still working on. Um, and we're super excited to show you all once we get to the point where we can start showing it off, um, which will hopefully be soon. Um, we published our most recent um, monthly news roundup um, about a week ago, um, which gave a lot of detail about where we're currently up to with Catan development. Um, bought some good cards. Uh, yeah, so if you're interested in what we're doing next, which is Catan, uh, and you haven't already read our latest um, monthly news roundup, go give that a read, because that officially goes into a lot more detail on Catan development than I think anything that we've published so far, um, just in terms of letting you know where we're up to. Um, it's on our website, if you want to go check that out. Uh, if anyone wants to post the link in the chat, uh, that'd be super cool. Um, but yeah, we're excited for Catan. Um, and we hope you're all excited for Catan as well. <gasps> That's a lot of cards. That's a lot of cards right there. <laughs> Alright, 16 mana and all the cards to play with. So, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? So I could get an overgrowth and then cancel it out with a life bring a seed. Seems like the best choice. So, yeah, so what I'm going to do is get a, a life bring a seed on here and get a overgrowth on here. So that cancels out the extra decay that I just got. Um, oh, and I can get a fertile soil. Might as well. Might as well. Uh, once per turn you may spend two to gain one victory point. Yeah, I'll get that. Yeah, we actually um, also did our first four-player online uh, stress test for Catan yesterday. Not yesterday. Um, Tuesday. We did it on Tuesday. Uh, and it went out without a hitch. So that bodes really well. Um, like, we were expecting something to break, just because you always expect something to break. Um, but yeah. We managed to have a full four-player game uh, of Catan online, uh, and everything did what it should do. So, yeah, it's going really well. Um, like I said, dead excited to be able to show you uh, all what cool stuff we've been doing with it. All right, Mindful Owl. Hmm, could get some victory points off a. Of Feral Chieftain. Let's do that. Get some Cascading Falls. Yeah, since I've been going for the Veils, I've got way more points than I ever had before. I think that's where I was going wrong before. I wasn't... I wasn't looking for them. Alright, what have I got? So I've got... Stag and my Feral Chieftain. So I could push, or I could just get way more victory points. I think because I'm in the lead, it makes more sense for me to just try and deplete the pool. Because once this is empty, the game ends. So that's how it defines when the game ends. Uh, curious to say it went bad for the four-player online then. What would happen then? Yes, so 
uh, if it did go badly, um, if anything, that would be a good thing if it went badly. So in a weird way, it's it's a good thing and a bad thing that it didn't have we didn't have any issues playing online uh, because if we did have issues playing online um, we have obviously everyone's running dev builds uh, you can get um, logs from the game uh, error logs so what would happen then is everyone that was playing the game would submit their error logs to our programming team uh, who would compare all the logs, figure out what went wrong, and then go, okay, that's what we need to fix. Um, which makes sense, hopefully. Like, basically, we're, we're going to start playing internally because every time something breaks, because we're playing developer versions, um, we can just immediately go, okay, export a log. What went wrong? What should have happened and didn't happen? Um, and we're going to be doing that for quite a while. So yeah, that's basically what would happen. Alright, so I could push because there's not much point in me because I've got no mana to spend. I do have the ability to buy a veil though because I've got enough points to do that. Spirit points. Spirit charms? can't remember what it's called. Uh, so I'm going not to push, because I'm not going to risk it. In other words, the dev code workers share notes and then go from there. Yes. We basically all sit down and say, okay, what went wrong? Figure out what went wrong and then go, okay, how do we fix it? How do we fix? But at the moment we're still adding some stuff to the game so uh, we might fix something and then later add something that then breaks it so we're not really spending that much time um, fixing things just because there's no point in fixing something uh, if a month down the line it's just gonna break because of something else so your work's being wasted um, but yes like Foxbird says uh, game dev is very iterative, um, and that's what we try and do here at Nomad. All right, I got a win. Success. I've shaken off the rust. I've officially shaken off the mystic rust. Uh, I'm going to play with a Veil of the Wild. So we can see what that's like uh, with... A new mechanic that we've not played with yet, which is leaders. Uh, also, Dark Legion Mage, I'll add you to the list of cool people who can potentially win some Mystic Veil keys. Yeah, whoever um, is the winner of the giveaway, I will just send you a whisper on Twitch, because that's the easiest way of doing it. Yes have made you reinstall that game. I'm very happy with that success. I'm very happy with that success. All right. What do I want to choose? So for anyone that doesn't know, the leader cards are a new type of card that got introduced in the Veil of the Wild expansion. Um, so it's an extra full card that gets added to your deck um, that has very interesting effects. Um, so they're double-sided, um, which is easy to see, obviously, in a digital format. Um, physical format, not digital. Uh, and you can spend mana to upgrade them. Uh, just like with regular advancements, they can give you resources. And they have various effects. Uh, and they have a cost to upgrade them. Uh, so with Ashai, uh, every time she's on my field and I go to the harvest phase, uh, I'll gain two victory points, but they don't get uh, subtracted from the pool. Uh, with Gingan, uh, I can discard my on-deck card, 
uh, and they each have upgraded sides. So if Ash is upgraded, uh, I gain a victory point for each decay in my field, uh, including cancel decay. Uh, and then with Gingan, uh, the player to my left and right must discard that on this deck card. For each player that discards, gain a victory point, but do not subtract them from the pool. Uh, they also are worth different amounts of static victory points. So some leaders are not as strong, but the ones that are not as strong are worth more victory points. So it's all about how you want to play your game, uh, and it gives you a bit more direction with deck building. Any news on Talisman expansions, Varney asks. Uh, not at the moment that I can share. Um, we're still figuring out what exactly we want to do next with Talisman. Uh, we know we want to do something, um, but we're not 100% sure what exactly. So, nothing that I can share at the moment. Um, but as soon as there is, we'll shout about it. Like, we did the survey for a while um, for Talisman to try and figure out what people wanted, um, which gave us some cool insight. Um, but yeah, we're still in the ideas phase, and if anyone does have any ideas of what they'd like to see in Talisman, um, let me know. Always happy to hear some more cool ideas from the community. Alright. What we got? Uh, I was like, oh, I should get the DLC too, and then I realised that I own all the DLC already. Ex extremely well done, self. That is extremely well done. Ah, <laughs> oh, spoil. The five-tailed whip has always been a good motivator in decision making. That's very true. Uh, I don't think I can quite encourage uh, that, but yeah, <laughs> let's get a limb thresher. Yeah, we just basically need to properly sit down and go, okay, what do we want to do with Talisman? Curious about what would be your most fave and memorable moment from playing Talisman, the Horus Heresy, playing with your co-workers, and why? Uh, so that would probably be when I first joined Nomad, uh, and I didn't... I had a vague understanding of what uh, Talisman... No, I knew what Talisman was, and I had a vague understanding of what uh, the... Warhammer setting was, uh, and on top of that, a vague understanding of the Horus Heresy. Um, and I needed to write up some store descriptions for the game. And I was like, okay, well, I'll play the game, um, and from there I'll be able to write some store descriptions and basically get everything I need to understand the game. Uh, and Andy, our art director, uh, is probably the biggest Warhammer fan here in the office. And I was playing it and I was like, okay, this is cool, but I don't really know who the characters are, what's the setting, what's the story. Um, so I had to sit down with Andy for a good half an hour. And I was like, Andy, can you explain the Horus Heresy to me? And he was like, oh boy, can I? You asked the right man. Uh, at which point we sat down for a good half an hour it was like all right so there's these different uh sons of the emperor and they all trying to be as cool as possible across space and here's all the bad guys um here's the who's the guy that everyone thinks is a bastard the one that betrays everyone um oh, i can't remember his name uh i can't remember his name the one who goes onto the Emperor's ship and then has a big fight with him. You all know who I'm talking about. The guy that goes on the ship and has a big fight. 
Um, Tom, I posted on the Reddit AMA you did where I suggested some fixes for Talisman uh, and whether devs would be open to those. Uh, Horus, yes. He's lit it's literally called the Horus Heresy. Why did I not think of that? Um, and whether the devs would be open to the ideas but never got a response. Uh, I also forwarded these suggestions through the official email questions at nomadgames.co.uk. Um, what were those fixes that you suggested? Because um, I'm the one that probably saw those. Um, I don't know why you never got a response, because I would have been the one that responded to that, so apologies if I didn't respond. Um, Uh, yeah, if you want to PM me on Discord, uh, feel free, because that should have been replied to. Uh, and I'm not sure why it wouldn't have. Because <coughs> I'm the one that does all the replying, so apologies uh, for not replying. Feel really bad about that. Just be glad they're not real, and you are in person with these people trying to remember their names, etc. Uh, yeah. I feel like they wouldn't take kindly to me not remembering their names. If I know anything about Space Marines. They're not the most friendly chaps in the world. Uh, have the dev team worked out your bug issue? Ah, yes. So for anyone that didn't watch the Talisman stream last week... Uh, I had a weird issue where I encountered the uh, the Grim Reaper in Talisman, and then I encountered the werewolf, and the little image that comes up on the side uh, to show you who you're interacting with uh, was still the Grim Reaper, even though I was encountering the werewolf. Uh, luckily, because I was on stream, uh, it meant that um, we could just clip that footage and then hand it over straight to the dev team and say, look, here's exactly what happened. Uh, they haven't figured out exactly what it is yet because it's not... It's a bug, but it's not like a high priority issue. Um, but it's on their list of things to do. So that answers your question. Uh, all right, let's see what I can do here. Spoil. Sad. Sad. PM sat on Discord and no worries. Just try to explain my work to Talisman to the devs. I will pass that on to the dev team uh, and let you know personally uh, when I've got an update because, like I said, I'm the only person that replies to stuff. So I can't even say, oh, well, it probably got lost with someone else on the team. Uh, it got lost with me. So... <laughs> I'll make sure that doesn't get lost. Alright, I've got six mana to spend and a load of cool cards to spend it on. So, what should I get? I think I'm going to go for... Lifebringer Seed? Or I could get a grassland and a fertile soil. I think that makes more sense. Uh, the honesty is appreciated. That's alright. Like, something that I've said since joining Nomad and sort of being the lead for marketing um, here at Nomad is obviously I'm the one that sets the tone. I'm the one that decides what we say as a company um, and I think as someone who has followed games since he was like 
five. Um, I've seen a lot, a lot of marketing and just game chat over the years. Um, and I think personally what I always appreciate is when game companies are just honest. Like, when game companies will just tell you what's happening. Or if they can't tell you what's happening, telling you that they can't tell you what's happening. Um, because that's the only way you really know, right? Like, if they just give you a vague answer and say, oh, well, you know, we'd like to be able to say this, but at the moment we can't, um, you know, it's better than them saying, oh, yeah, we're definitely working on it, or, oh, it's something we'd like to do in the future, even though they know it's not going to happen. Uh... Enjoy the rest of the stream. I have a volleyball game in an hour, so I gotta bounce, pun intended. Till next time. No worries, thanks for tuning into the stream. And good luck with your game. Um, yeah, appreciate it. Uh, what have we got? Four mana to spend. Nothing exciting. Let's push. Alright, five mana to spend. That's a bit more. Bit more what we want. Let's get a Heartwood Healer. You could make a game of Talisman Twitch with your co-workers and bosses so we could see what level of betrayals and backstabbings you do to win the game. Yeah, it would be quite nice to actually get a uh, multiple developer stream on the go. Uh, just because, yeah. I quite like doing solo streams, but it gets a bit lonely sitting here on my own. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure how we do that because I'm still relatively new to streaming. Um, so I'd probably have to look up a way of getting everyone's stream in the same Twitch stream? I don't know how I'd do that. Assuming you'd have to do some kind of weird funky setup, um, but I'm sure I could figure it out. Yes, that is a scary worm. Don't like that scary worm. So. A lot of the animations are really nice, uh, but some of the animations just make me go, mm. Give me uh, creepy Dune vibes. Oh, but some of them are just cool, like the Storm Elemental. Uh, and the Woodland Guardians are quite nice. Oh, I always use this, this image on the uh, social medias that we have. It's very good, just like, come check out what we're doing. Reminds me of the worst parts of Hollow Knight, I 100% know what you mean. When you go into that underground area, and there's all those grubs that you kill and then they're not quite dead. Yeah, it's not nice, is it? <laughs> Alright, I've got five mana to spend. Let's get a Water Weaver and not be too... I'm gonna get a Life Bring a Seed. So I've not been getting that many veils this game. I think that's going to mess me up. Uh, there are fairly easy ways to do it and way elaborate ways to do it. Depends on how much you want to do and how you want to do multi-dev perspective streams. If there's an easy way, I like the easy way. I'll always go for the easy way if there's an easy way. Alright, what we got? Push and then see if I can get a water weaver. Alright, cool. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Or I could get a Goldwing Griffin. Yeah, let's get a Goldwing Griffin. Because that'll get me some uh, spirit tokens so I can get uh, on board. Yes, I do wish to flip it. Yeah, uh, I'd also just want to give a shout out to everyone that's watching because when I first started out streaming about a month ago, two months ago now, um, I want to get like five or so people um, onto a Twitch stream. Uh, but I think since we've started doing it weekly, um, we've managed to get quite a few people on board, which is really nice to see just because, you know, 
I want to be able to do this cool stuff for the community. Um, as we get closer to Catan releasing, I want to do streams where I get to show it off before it releases. So, yeah. Just want to make a really nice little community of cool people. Because you're all cool to me. Alright, what am I going to go for here? I'm not going to push because I've got enough resources to get something nice. So let's get a water weaver and a fertile soil. Alright. Uh, plus there's always YouTube to help him with it. If not, then some content creators can help him. Yes. <laughs> I can definitely look up a YouTube video. I feel like I'll be able to figure it out from there. Once per turn, choose a card in your field that on deck it gains a helmet until end of turn. I've got no veil cards, so that's a really bad one to get because it's just worth one. Uh, discard this card to use any. Mm -hmm. Alright, I'm going to grab that Stormcaller. I think that's probably the best bet. Yeah, especially like as we get closer to Catan releasing, um, we've got uh, uh, Dwayne, who's on our head of our Unity team. Um, I think he'd really, I think he'd do really well uh, just being able to talk about how development of Catan uh, has been going over the last few months. Um, and I think he'd be able to answer some really interesting questions, um, and he's also just a really cool guy. So. I think it'd be nice to get him on the on the stream and just start talking about it. Um, but we're still a little bit out of being able to talk about Catan um, as much as we'd like to um, at the moment. Um, just because we want to we want to get it just right before we can start showing it off. Um, all right, nothing that exciting. Do I push? Yeah, go on then. Do I push? Mm, no, I'm not going to push. Just going to get some fertile soil, so I'll get more mana on a future turn. Yeah, that's another thing I like about Mystic Veil. A lot of it is just forward thinking, like it's a very um, think aheady game. If that makes sense. Ooh, I think I'm going to push, just because if I get a Sundered Land, that's really good. So, just to explain what my thought process is at the moment, uh, on this card I have a Cursed Land, which gives me one Decay, uh, but I have a Lifebringer Seed, which cancels all the Decay on this card. So, if I can pay the mana for a Sundered Land, that will give me two Growth and one Decay. But... Uh, because I can put it on the Sundered Land, it would cancel all the decay. So that'll just give me two growth with no decay on it. So, fingers crossed, I don't spoil, because that would be the worst. That would be the absolute worst. <gasps> Didn't spoil. We like to see it. We so like to see it. So, Sundered Land on there. Nice. Happy with that. Very happy with that. Yeah, I'll flip my token. 
Uh, this is exactly why I asked how he wants to do it. I work with content creators on that stuff, but once, if I know what he wants, I can point him to proper places or setups. That would be massively appreciated. Um, Freechi. Freechi? Did I get it right? Did I get it right? I can never remember where my webcam is. Freechi. Did I get it right? Uh, I love Mystic Veil too bad. I'm bad at it. The only way you can get better is by practice. <gasps> got it right! Success! It only took me like two months. Alright. I'm too busy focusing on my successes. I need to focus on what's happening in the game. Uh, gain two points for each helmet. I got any that have a decent amount on them. Not really. Sad. Hmm. I play Mystic Veil on my phone, I still am bad at it. Just gotta practice more, my friend. You've just got to practice more. It's all I can tell you. All right, do I go for a seven and a plow? Probably. That's probably the best way of doing it. Let's go for a will of the wisp and a plow. Ooh, and then I can get a veil. Uh, speaking of phones with games, what phone games are you currently playing, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I am currently playing... Um, what am I currently playing? Get my phone and actually check. Uh, I am currently playing... Slay the Spire. Because I am just an absolute... No, for Slay the Spire. I've got it on my Switch, I've got it on PC, I've got it on my phone. Uh, I've been tempted to get it on my PS4, but I haven't yet. But, oh, it's just such a good, such a good game. Purchase the Enclave event just because why not? Oh, you will. The Spire addiction is real. Oh, yeah. It's got such a good, like, oh, I'll just do one more run. I'll just do one more run. And then, like, I can never just be like, oh, I'll just start a run and, um, you know, I'll quit midway through. Um, that never happens. Never happens. I'm always kidding myself. Uh, I've not played Monster Train, but I've heard very, very good things about it. Um, I need to pick it up at some point, but I've got so many games in my backlog that it's a bit hard to justify, to be honest. <laughs> like, my rule, I was talking to my partner about this um, last night, actually. Uh, my rule is I will only buy a game now if I can genuinely say to myself, I am going to play this within the next six months. And if I can't say that to myself, I won't buy it. And at the moment, I've got so many games in my backlog that nothing's jumping out at me as, yeah, I'll definitely play this in the next six months. Uh, I'm sure it'll happen at some point, but at the moment, nothing's jumping out at me. Plus working at Nomad. Working with Nomad is working with making games, etc. Yeah, that's very true. Like, I work with games for a living, so uh, previously uh, I used to sit my computer after I finished work and be like, oh cool, let's play this cool game. Um, but now I finish work and I'm like, I've sat in front of my computer at home for most of the day. I want to sit down and do something else. I want to read a book. Um, I've gotten really into reading um, over the last year. 
um, which I, I used to be kind of into reading, but lately I've been like way, way more into reading than I ever was previous, which is really nice. Like I've read loads more than I ever read before in my life, um, which is very nice. All right, I've got 17 mana. <gasps> I've got creepy, creepy man. Do I get the creepy, creepy man? Yeah, big draw, big mana. Very happy with that. I could get the stag and a bear totem. I think I'm gonna get the stag and a bear totem. Yeah, I think that's my plan. I think that's my plan. So, stag, and then bear totem on this one. Uh, what book are you currently reading? Uh, let me just get the name of it. <laughs> All right, let me just log into my Storygraph account. Uh, so I am currently reading uh, Grace Keepers by Kirsty Logan, uh, which is a nice little. It's set on a world after uh, it gets flooded, um, and it's quite a nice little, just fairly simple story. But it's a cool setting. Um, one of the main characters is in a circus boat that travels around the world after it's flooded. Um, so yeah, it's quite cool. All right. I'm going to discard this to get a pool of light, and then I can also get a waterfall. Yeah, and then the book that I read before that uh, was Ramina by Junji Ito, who is one of my favourite author, authors, uh, who I have, over the last year, been picking up more and more of his books, because, oh, he's just so good. So good. <coughs> How have I got two mana? Oh, I've spent my mana. I was looking at books, wasn't paying attention to uh, what was happening in the game. Yeah, um, there's only a couple of Junji Ito books that I still need to get at this point, um, but I've got most of them. Uh, oh yeah, I'm a big manga reader. Um, I don't read a huge amount of comics. Uh, the comics that I do read are on the... I've subscribed to the Marvel Unlimited app. Um, and yeah, I tend to read comics on there because I read quite a lot. So if I bought all the comics that I wanted to read, uh, it would start getting a bit ridiculous. So yeah, I tend to just read them through the app. Um, sorry, I've just got a notification that uh, KFC are bringing vegan buckets to the UK. Uh, I'm a vegetarian for anyone that doesn't know. Uh, and I've really like the vegetarian stuff that KFC are doing, so I'm quite excited about that. Uh, yes, thanks for the congrats on the win. Uh, I think I managed to shake off the rust officially now. Um, yes, I do really like that Junji Ito is just a regular looking dude. Uh, I need to, because he's published two books about him moving in with his girlfriend and her having two cats that were like horrifically to him um, and as someone who moved into a house uh, a year ago and then got three cats i feel like that'll be some highly relatable content so i need to pick that up at some point um yeah very much enjoyed junji ito um i also recently read the room 
uh, or just Room by Emma Donoghue, um, the one that got turned into a movie, and that was really good. Um, I really, really enjoyed that. So, yeah. All right, I'm going to wrap up the stream because um, uh, it's coming up to two hours. So what I'm going to do is assign everyone a number uh, who has tuned into the stream and has joined in the chat. Uh, and then I'm going to use a random dice roll um, to determine who's going to get some cool Mystic Veil keys. Yeah, and uh, don't worry if you've already got a copy of Mystic Veil. Um, you don't need to give me the keys back or anything. Um, just give them to a friend. Feel free. Uh, so, I believe I've got everyone noted down. Let's do... So, a minimum is one, and then I've got 14 people, and I've got a little number next to each of you. So, three, two, one. Number 10, that's Albedo Overseer. So, well done, Albedo Overseer. Uh, I will be messaging you on Twitch shortly, uh, and I will send you a copy of Mystic Veil and uh, all the DLC as well. Um, so I think you said you already have it, but if you do, give it to a friend, um, make someone's day. Um, yeah, I'm going to message you shortly after the stream is over. Um, congratulations again on your win, if you're still knocking around, um, to Albedo Overseer. And yeah, thank you very much to everyone that's tuned into the stream. Uh, massively appreciate it. Uh, next week, um, we're going to be playing some more Talisman. Uh, and then after that, I'm going to be playing some of our fighting fantasy games uh, here on the stream. So, yeah, feel free to tune in next week, same time next week. Uh, in the meantime, join our cool Discord. Uh, it's where I post all the updates about all the cool stuff that we're doing as a studio. Um, all the Catan updates. Um, and yeah, next week when we play some Talisman, uh, once again, if people want to take me on in Talisman and play some online games, um, then they absolutely can do that. So, yeah. Also, Dark Legion Mage, are you trying to um, do some commands to get some stuff up? Because if you are, I think that's something I need to set up in Streamlabs, right? I'll do that after this stream, because I really want that to work. Um, so what I'll do is, after this stream, I'll go set it up, uh, and then I might ask Freechi uh, just to check that I've done it right. Um, yeah, we need to set up a cool bot. Um, like I said, never streamed before uh, I started working at Nomad, so there's still a lot of stuff that I'm getting to grips with, but I'll set that up. Uh, back just in time for the end, it seems. Typical. Can confirm I'm about to head off Geeky Chappy, but appreciate you tuning in regardless. <laughs> Uh, not necessarily Streamlabs, but yes, I actually test against Streamlabs, but that's a non-live discussion. Yeah, I'll send you a message uh, after the stream um, for each you, and we'll chat about the best setups that we can have, and I'll see you all later. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>